Bahamas. We are going to make it right. If you became a millionaire, would you keep working? The commander is here. Ah! What's going on right now is California's trying to figure out. Don't be. Don't pop your butt. Yeah. Oh, I can. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto. How are we all doing today? Today is Monday, May 8th, 11.32 a.m. My name is DZ, and sometimes when I trade a meme coin, I feel a little greasy. I feel a little dirty. I feel a little shady, but you know what? I'm jumping in it. And the reason I say that the, the chat the entire time has just been people typing in their favorite meme coin, yeah. getting it all out there. Uh, all right. All right. How are we all? Are we feeling good? We're feeling good. I just got I'm text by great. Kat. Kat doesn't watch. Kat, your mom's t-shirts are on the floor in the guest bedroom next to the PC. Uh, somebody get that message to her somehow. <laughs> Someone go knock on my door. Uh, maybe maybe if, if I'll, I'll text her during Frankie's section. How are yeah. we all doing? DZ, McSqueezy. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that one, but we'll keep it going. Uh, BRC20 season. Yes, it is. A lot of people talking about Pepe. A lot of people talking about these other meme coins. I'm going to reveal the last two meme coins that I bought. One of them Guys, it's like 15 hours old. Uh, it's very, very new. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna hold on to it for at least a couple of days here. I'm feeling great. I hope you're feeling great. I know Buttsinator is feeling good. Uh, <laughs> all right, I, I should have maybe read the name before That's I read the message name. there. How are you feeling though, uh, Drew? Uh, we just got done yeah. having a barbecue around the Drew, barbecue. Barbecue. That's right. Over at Nick Two. Nick uh, Two. Nick DeMondi's. <laughs> it was a good time. It was good. It was good. Uh, kids beating each other up in the backyards, you know, just real wholesome crypto content. I feel like I should have been greedier with the uh, ribs because AJ yeah. writes crypto came in and he took a half I rack of ribs. Know. Did you notice how many I ribs AJ that. grabbed? Unbelievable. Very, it was, it was, uh, it was borderline rude. I, I see him. <laughs> he's like, oh, what are you talking about? Yeah. When there's there one are. rack of ribs left, you don't take half of it. There's four ribs left. Did he eat four ribs or was that more than four? I feel like he's a liar. More, it was more AJ's like AJ's lying right it was now. More like AJ's a hundred percent lying. It was one hundred percent at least six. You're lying if you're saying it's four. So you're either stupid or a liar. I think he's lying here. Yeah, All right. Oh, stupid. it's getting heated. It's getting heated. <laughs> I wanted ribs, AJ. <laughs> All right. This is a show about crypto. And yes. so we're going to now start talking about crypto. All right. Uh, BitBoy Crypto, make sure you are subbed, everybody. We're at 1.46 million. Uh, ben, he's been telling all his meme coin plays. So uh, if you like uh, making money with some uh, kind of exciting and fun, definitely check that out. I uh, shrug there for a second. Make sure you're following uh, Ben on Twitter and make sure you follow DZ. Uh, that's right. That's, that's, right. that's who you really should be following. Uh, let's see. Uh, you know what? I'm going there. I'm going there right now. Going DZ there. underscore BTC. If you want to check it out, uh, Johnny, I guess. Is there something I'm supposed to show up here? Um, no, just your uh, yeah, just your credential. We have the hit merch and we have a, a Bitcoin Miami coming up. So okay, okay. So five thousand people saw this tweet. Guys, I will be showing it uh pretty soon. Hey, uh, shout out to the JPEG junkies, they broke into the top six. Really mm. cool stuff. Uh hit merch, guys. I'm gonna be revealing some secret hit merch what? at 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time at Around the Blockchain. You're going to have to watch that. So, secret merch coming. I I'll show something. What should okay. I show? Should I show the hat? I'll show just, the hat. Just a touch. Just, just a, a touch. Just a bit. All right. You know what? You saw enough. You oh, saw enough. God. That's all you get to see. Okay? That's all you get to see. Uh, BitBoy looks identical to Dennis Rodman. That's questionable. That's very questionable. I yeah. think there's a little bit of a height difference. You know, Ben is the average American male height. Dennis Rodman's like six foot seven or something like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Huge, huge uh, rebounder, though. Yeah. And you know what? Ben also rebounds. He I've rebounds seen, from the depths of the bear market. I've never seen Ben wear a cheetah haircut either. So, you know, there's that. You haven't? No. <laughs> How long have you been working? Not yet. I mean, I might be in for it, but. All right. All right. Drewski. Uh, is it Drusky or Drewski? Drewski. All right. What about that influencer? Is it Drusky or Drewski? Drusky. <laughs> is it Drusky? Okay. I called him Drewski. Then uh, someone here was like, Drusky, you mean? Like, no. I guess so. I don't know. All right. Uh, so if you want to see all the merch, go to hitmerch.com. Again, you'll have to stick around to see what I'm wearing at 5 p.m. Shirt and hat is going to be different. Uh, Bitcoin Miami. We are very, very, very close to it coming up. Yeah. Uh, when does everybody leave? They leave a week from now, right? Pretty much. Yeah. They're all going to be heading out uh, Monday, some Sunday and uh, out there all week. So it sounds like they got all kinds of crazy plans coming up might be hitting the courts playing some sports can we reveal what we're doing out there with a room i don't think so i think we gotta I, the, i've said too much already uh, yeah i think we're giving a little but it's, I, it's I, gonna be big king charles was gonna be there yeah and coronation the grim, and the grim reaper and the grim reaper yeah what is going on with the grim reaper 
Guys, tell us what your Grim Reaper theory is. Uh, is it really, was that really the Grim Reaper? Was it the real Grim Reaper? Or was it someone in a costume? Was it a security breakdown? We're talking about Prince Charles's coronation. Yeah. Someone allowed, I'm assuming they allowed it to happen, right? I don't think there was that much of a security breach. Usually that's pretty uh, well-guarded area. So it's, yeah, it's, hard it's to a imagine. normally well-guarded yeah. area. Yeah. And someone like a black hood and a sickle, right? They, yeah. Then they like had a, at least a, I don't know. It was very odd. Yeah. Um, I don't think it was a real specter. Um, you know, some people are probably, no, no, that was a sign. DZ, that was a sign. It was mm. in the book. All right. Uh, let's go to coin gecko here. Oh, uh, that is not good. The coin market cap is now down two and a half percent. That is yeah. a steep, steep decline. Uh, market cap coming in at one point two trillion. Looks like it almost wants to break down below and hit the one nine area. Twenty four hour volume also down slightly, but this is Monday, so we're coming off a of Sunday, so coming off of forty five billion. Not exactly a high, high numbers. Bitcoin dominance forty five percent. ETH dominance coming in at eighteen point six, and gas, 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 gas is ninety three guay. Hmm. A lot of people are trying to get in and out of these meme coins, but they can't. Fifty dollar transactions, forty dollar transactions, hundred dollar transactions. Uh, so a lot, a lot of um, pain there, a pain when you're trying to get in and out of these meme coins. Uh, and again, we're going to be revealing these things soon, folks. We're going to be revealing them soon. So just stick around. Are you ready to look at the market watch? How are you feeling, uh, with the market? It's, it's kind of down. It's not looking good. We have it Bitcoin is. down 3.2%. Are you freaking out yet? You know, I'm not freaking out. I'm, it's almost too good to be true to imagine 25 K or even 20 K Bitcoin coming back to me to, to purchase and, and do kind of a seasonal DCA pretty well insulated to bitcoin and then it would be really great if we saw 25k again but you know well it kind of looks like it might be headed that way at this point so we'll see. yeah uh, i'm stuck with my memes eth is so trash i've been trading a uh, meme one of the meme coins is on cardano and so now we're looking at 30 cent transactions not 35 dollar transactions hey. so stick around if you hate gas fees you still want to get in on the meme action dz has got something for you Ooh. All right, uh, let's look at the coin market cap here. We have Bitcoin down 3.2%, Ethereum down 2.1%, 27,964 and 1864. They like this Nintendo 64. Best Nintendo console, chat, go, Drew, go. What's the best Nintendo console? 007. No, console, not oh, game. Oh, Nintendo console and 64. Absolutely. All right, I give it a Super Nintendo, but Nintendo 64 also good. You know what, Game Boy. It's hard to really uh, I deny have Game the power Boys. of Game Boy. I got all my kids Game Boys. They love them. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Uh, Pokemon Red or Gold or Red or Blue? Red, Yellow, and Blue. Ooh. All of them. You got oh, you're going to have them trade in the EVs that's and right. the Bulbasaur. Give me your Charmander. That's Give me right. Your... All right. That's cool. All right. Uh, let's look at the rest of the coin market cap here. We have B&B down 1.9%. XRP down 4.6. Looks like it's the top loser mm. of the top 10 here. Uh, so that's a little bit of pain that people are feeling. Cardano also down. So if you're looking to get some meme coins, uh, hey, it isn't going to cost you too much on Cardano. You get about three Cardano for a dollar at the moment. Doge down two and a half. Polygon down 4.2. And Solana down roughly 4%. Polkadot down 4%. Everything's down 4%. Sheeb's down 4%. Avalanche down 4%. We round up and Uniswap's down 4%. We round down ton coins down 4%. Everything is down, but there are some things that are up. I don't know what this is going to look like, so please don't just have it stable coins at 0%. There's got to be some cryptos in the green. Yeah. Let's check it out right now. What do we got? See. Woo! If you stack hey. that stacks, you're up 15% just on the daily here. BitGet token up 5%. And then after that, very very slow we have flare and cosmos down uh so the flare drop holders feel good but whoa look at that hourly drop there five percent mm. basically and then like i said uh very quickly goes into the stable coin so guys it was fun we had three coins everybody we had three coins uh cosmos up uh slightly as well but now it is a scary time oh i'll, I'll look at pepe after the top losers here can pepe run again Ooh, well i didn't have to look far oh. it is the top loser of the day folks oh uh God. but it is the top gainer of the week, 200%. Looks like Pepe's at down 17%, renders down 12%, Sui, Radix uh, down 11 and 8% respectively. And then uh, let's see, the graph is down. I still haven't picked up my graph that I was hoping to pick up. Optimism, Aptos, uh, all on the way down there. So if you're looking mm -hmm. at accumulating some cheap stuff, I am. I put my DCA money into meme coins, and then maybe I'm going to try to spend those meme coins into regular profits. I've already done it on Cardano. Um, so maybe I'll do it on ETH as well. All right, let's look at Pepe. A lot of people, do we watch Ben Long, Pepe? 
world. I don't. I haven't. I haven't checked the time of his tweets there. Yeah. Uh, but he has been on a roller coaster of emotion when it comes to Pepe. <laughs> All right, that is the big run-up. Uh, this was, at the time, the run-up. Yeah. And then this was the run-up. Um, then this was the run-up. And then now that was the run-up. Is there going to be another run-up? I don't know. It Maybe that was the all-time high. We don't know for sure. But I will say this. This was the run-up, and that was the run-up before these were. Uh, but that 14-day chart does not look great. All right, guys. You see this psychological support around the two here. Uh, you can see a little bounce there. You see a little bounce there. You see a little bounce there. Now you see a little bounce here. We are slightly above uh, the two there. It looks like two, one, three. Mm -hmm. I'm expecting some sort of support there around two. If you want to put in a little buy order there, I think you'll be okay. Will you l maybe lose all your money? Yes. This is a meme coin. Yeah. It's called Pepe. What does it do? Nothing. So yeah, it could easily, easily drop, guys. But it could also make a lot of people a lot of money again. It still right. can happen. Um, if we look at, oh, yeah, so we're down over 50%, I would say. There's opportunity here. Uh, opportunity to lose all your money. Opportunity for a 4X, maybe mm -hmm. 8X. I'm not going to be one of these people that Pepe will be in the top 10 six months from now. It will surpass Doge. I don't know if it's going to do all that. Even if it did, sure, you're going to have some gains there. But uh, there's going to be other gains that are going to exceed that. But Hey, I can see a 2X. I can see a 4X. I could also see you losing 90% of your money very quickly. Uh, looks like a lot of people sold Pepe, made some nice profit. Uh, maybe some people trying to get in now. What are, what are your thoughts on Pepe? Are you looking at getting in? I got just a toe dip, you know? I did like 100, 150 bucks when it just did. Uh, How much that, was your gas? Um, God, I It was about 30 bucks. So it was pretty expensive. You know, it's not cheap getting... Uh, Getting getting it in comparison to the actual how much I'm buying, but like I said, I'm I'm seeing it hit too. I just got a slight exposure. I'm a huge fan of the Pepe meme and mm -hmm. the culture that's been created around uh, the entire you know uh, frog that's supposedly a uh, that had high, the high levels of estrogen, high levels of estrogen. You know, I, one yeah. thing would be fun is if we, what if they say. made a Pepe NFT that. Uh, mutated when it drank astrazine water and then also got is that part Pfizer. of the lore yeah like you could have a Pfizer, you know and okay then so like... then it teleports it's a reading kids book okay yeah. let's move on here all right uh all right we're moving on <laughs> tim why are you smiling at that uh those are different tim y'all it's uh different tim yeah. all right uh all right let's uh coin market cap also uh you're we're gonna see some of the same info there yeah. but what do we have for the charts are we are uh we got someone calling in do i need to talk about this right here yeah let's how bring we're giving up. away this is a big some money deal. This is a big deal. This is kind of fun. We got Frankie calling. So how do I win this? Um, Am I eligible? But potentially. Because we're giving know. away five thousand dollars a Pepe. Oh, I don't think you're. No, you're not. I'm not eligible. No, I, I can't so. like cheat and like no. try to steal it. No, man. All right. You know what? Do I have to market buy it like the other people? Allegedly. Okay. All right. Yeah, I didn't get it. I saw Pepe early, y'all. I didn't buy it. I didn't buy yeah. it. I was on a cruise, and so that was like my excuse at the time. I'm on a cruise. I'm in the Bahamas. I'm checking out of that stupid thing called crypto, and I miss life-changing gains. <sighs> it's how it goes. It's cope. It it's is. Cope. All right. Need cope. It's cope. All Where's right. Uh, yeah, we are, guys, we are giving away five thousand dollars in Pepe uh, from BitGet and BitBoy. So big shout out to BitGet making that possible. Uh, so if you want to go BitGet, uh, I think uh, do we have a link in the description or a link in the chat at least here? Yes. And uh, then you'll be able to get. First 250 users, we get 15 to 20 in Pepe. Total prize pool, $5,000 worth of Pepe. First come, first serve. So this isn't like, oh, will I maybe get some? Hey, everybody's basically getting about five to 20 bucks uh, as long as it lasts. So get in, get your free Pepe. Pretty, yeah, pretty cool, right? Uh, you want to get some? You don't want gas fees? Sometimes there's a, a moment where centralized exchanges are uh, key. Yeah. And it's when you want to need to save some gas. Uh, so if you see coins on major exchanges, sure, maybe the run-up is gone, but then you don't have to pay those uh, exorbitant gas fees there. All right, uh, link is in chat. All right, thank you, Steve-O, for the uh, the heads up there. All right, we, uh, do we got a Frank, man? We got a Frankie in the stables. Frankie's Ready? farm? Yeah, let's pull All him right. up. Brought to you by Sink. Mm. I love some Frank's farm. I don't know if you ever played that. <laughs> What's going on, DZ? Hey, can you hear what me? is going on? Yes, I can. Cool hat. Why are you not in the studio? Hey, 
Uh, so actually funny story. Uh, I got rug pulled on mm. my morning market update that I tried to record two times. The first time I recorded it, uh, there was no audio. So then I recorded it again, triple checked the audio and it was good. And then, uh, you know, when I finished the video, only uh, there was only audio for half the video. So uh, I got completely caught up trying to deal with that uh, and also wiping my tears away because I was also uh, on the cruise and missed that life, those life changing gains. Uh, for so, so were you like uh, in a trade? I mean, did you forget how to do the audio? Because, I mean, I remember Frankie <laughs> the Shooter, you and Mike, we used to share a desk. You eat, sleep and breathe audio and visual, you know, uh, files. And, you know, it was, it was part of your being. Have you been trading too much of these meme coins and you forgot? Yeah. It, it, it's that, that's what it is is like i'm trying to adjust the audio levels and all i see is like pepe and then yeah, i yeah. see uh you know i see just every i just see the the poop emoji just fly away in my head and i'm just like yeah just to, uh you know they say head head in the clouds uh, but my head is in the, in the toilet okay and okay. yeah yeah well you said poop emoji <laughs> i didn't know did you ever get a swirly as a kid I, I never got a swirly i don't know anyone who ever got a swirly they weren't giving swirlies in my high school that's, that's borderline assault right yeah, I mean, I never uh, personally received a swirly. I actually never met anybody that got a swirly. I, I, I think it's it probably old wives tale. It's like some yeah, from it's... nerd <laughs> movies in the 80s. It's like that yeah, it... and quicksand with things we don't need to worry about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Quicksand. I thought quicksand was gonna be like a big problem in my life. Oh, I thought like, it was going, to, going to kill me. It was going yeah. to kill me when I was growing up. It was, I had to look out everywhere. I'm in a parking lot of Walmart. I'm looking out for quicksand. Yeah, absolutely. But, all right. but yeah, I think, I think it's just here. a myth. <laughs> all, right. all right what do we got with the charts though man uh, it's crypt is bitcoin in quicksand right now segue you, you took the words out of my mouth easy i was gonna say speaking of quicksand uh let's talk about uh bitcoin getting sucked to the downside uh but yeah uh let's go ahead let me go ahead and share my screen really quickly here and uh, let's go ahead and take a look, right? Because uh, we do actually, if you guys remember from last week, I'll cover this really quickly, kind of how we wound up here. Uh, if you guys were watching the show last week, uh, any of my live streams on the Frankie Candles channel uh, or any of the uh, my appearances on this show, you will know <clears throat> that we were looking at some pretty key levels. Now, one of those key levels was at 28.8K, which has been uh, basically the doorway to more upside and more downside every time we come up to it. Uh, but most recently last week, guys, we were looking at this level, uh, two levels, right? So you have that 28.8K level, which was going to be our doorway to lower prices uh, at the time because we were above that level. Uh, if we were below it, uh, like we were right here, it was the doorway to higher prices. So we knew once we broke that level, we were likely going to shoot up towards that point of control at about 30K. Uh, and then we were looking at this on the way down saying, hey, two key levels that we're watching right now is number one, going to be this 29.2 level because that is our current value area high of our current range that we're trading in right here. Um, and acceptance back below this level. Uh, and if we, you know, basically if we were accepted back below this level and could not get back above it, exactly like we saw happen right here, we broke down, bearishly retested, could not get back above the level. This was where, uh, you know, once we got accepted back below that level, I was looking at that 28.8K, uh, that 28.8K, uh, area, which again, we were talking about on this show, uh, being the doorway to lower prices and what happened, we lost that level and the next likely place for price to go, uh, is that point of control, right? Which is essentially kind of where we sit right now. We are a little bit below that point of control, um, but this is how we were able to see this move. Uh, now, I, I want to be clear. Now, I didn't know that we were 100% going to come to this level because, uh, you know, I get uh, obviously as a trader uh, and, you know, as, as we obviously look at the charts constantly on my channel, uh, I get some comments from people who might not be, they might be new to the market or they might be new to trading. Uh, and they kind of come in and they're like, let me guess, it could go up or down. And yeah, basically that is the answer to that question is yes, right? Yes, it can go up or down and there's no way to know 100% what will happen. All we can do is take what we have on the charts and uh, kind of make an educated guess and uh, you know take the bearish pieces, the bullish pieces, and then try to lean one way or another based off of evidence. So uh, I do wanna be very, very clear. I did not know 100% that we were gonna come down to that POC. However, 
I did know that if we lost this value area high, the chances of us breaking this value area low became much, much higher. And I also knew that once we broke this level, the chances of that POC were then extremely, extremely high. So that was uh, you know, why we were looking at that level. And then again, what happened when we broke it? We got a straight shot to that point of control. And uh, you know, I always say, I like to mess around and say we have a crystal ball, uh, but you know, maybe we do, but that's not how I was able to predict this move. I was able to predict this move using the volume profiles. And uh, this is why I talk about them so much on my channel and this show as well. So that's basically how we wound up where we're at right now. But where is price going from here? Now, first off, we have to be aware that we do have on the two day a pretty bearish signal here, and that is the blood diamond on the two day time frame. Uh, you know, this is pretty bearish in my opinion. All uh, you know, on top of the fact that we did have those two blood diamonds print on the daily time frame. Now that we're getting this to print on the two day, uh, you know, this could easily bring us down to our range lows uh, down here, you know, between about, I would say about 27.2 uh, and 26.950. So this could easily bring us down here. So I would be very, very careful uh, with that two-day blood diamond. And uh, again, you know, nobody knows 100% where this market's going to go. The obvious question is, are we going to coil up in this range and break out to the upside? Or are we going to come down here back to our range lows? And if that does happen, which I do think is possible because of this blood diamond, there is something we have to pay close attention to. And that is that head and shoulders for a uh, pattern that we were looking at last week. Uh, as you guys know, this is still here. We have our left shoulder, our head, and our right shoulder. And if price, if that two-day blood diamond can push us back down to this bottom of this range, this is where, number one, I will be looking for longs because we will be approaching the bottom of the range. However, if we lose this value area low decisively and we start to break lower, and we cannot hold this white box as support. This is where I am going to be expecting this head and shoulders to start to break down and potentially play out to the technical target of about $23,000, where we have our point of control from this previous range that we traded in back in February. So that is the measured move, It, but I am not getting bearish. I wanna be very, very clear about this. I am not getting bearish on this move until we break below this $26,500 level. That's where I would expect to get sucked into this volume gap right here, fall through that gap, and the next major level of support I'm looking at is gonna be between 25.3 and 25K. Now, if we start breaking those levels, that's where it's gonna be very, very likely that we see that head and shoulders measured move play out in full, bringing us to that point of control at $23,000. Now, we are a little bit far away from there, uh, so obviously, you know, I'm not calling for this to happen today or tomorrow, uh, but again, you know, looking for that two-day blood diamond to potentially bring us to the bottom of the range, where initially I'll be looking for longs and then the decisive loss of that 26 thousand five hundred dollar level that's where i'm expecting 25k to come in and uh that's basically what i'm expecting uh you know that's what i'm looking at on bitcoin for the medium term here now dz i know uh you were bringing up the meme coins i know the meme coins are going crazy so uh, uh i guess let's go ahead and take a look at pepe before I let you guys go, uh, because I know DZ was uh, taking a look at some of those support levels, and I would have to agree, taking a look at Pepe here, I'm going to turn on those Heikinashi candles so it makes it a little smoother, um, and some of these major levels of support that I would be looking at on Pepe would be this level right here at about point, I don't want to butcher this uh, amount of zeros here, but it's point. 0000019. That is going to be the next major level of support I will be looking at for Pepe. Now, if you start breaking that level, I would look to be coming down towards your, uh, you know, 786 fib level down here at about one point. Six. Okay. Yeah, yeah one I, six. I just skip I, all the zeros at this point and I just say four to three to like two now. And yeah, it might break <laughs> down to one nine, a little bounce. If not, probably to one six. Sounds yep. crazy, but you know, there's like a lot of 30s and 40 percents in here. Um, it just when you have that many zeros, it's confusing. I think that's by it's, design, yeah. though. It sounds better yeah. to say a oh, hundred dollars equals a billion versus like you know a hundredth. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, I like that. I like skipping the zeros. I'm gonna start doing that, and then uh, you know, if anyone wants to screenshot those actual levels, you guys could just take a screenshot and get those actual uh, measurements. But uh, yeah, that's kind of what I would expect. You lose that golden pocket, I'd expect to get sucked down to that seven eight six again. About uh, you know, ones at about one six, uh, and then you start losing. If you start losing that level, I will. Uh, let me just go ahead and share that real quick. Uh, if you start losing this one six level, you could see you do have a decent gap here uh, down to these highs at about you know one three. So those are kind right, of well, we the Major two, levels that I would be there's watching. There's two new meme coins coming. I gave Tony, uh, I, I let him borrow 0.1 ETH because he didn't have like a, you know, MetaMask at home. So he's just buying a small amount. 
Make sure he tells you we're going to share it with the Bit Squad. Uh, Boom, guys. Frankie might get five minutes. Heads up. Don't don't get mad at Frankie. In fact, Frank, maybe you need <laughs> to wait five minutes to buy. Um, but yeah, we're we're going to be sharing two meme coins soon. One of them though on Cardano, so you can get in and out for like thirty cents. Yeah, the gas fees are insane right now. So I, I I'm in I'm into the Cardano coin for sure. All right. See you soon. That's all I'm going to say. A little parcel tongue. That's a hint. Ooh. That is a hint. All right. Uh, and there's another one, too. <laughs> but stick around, man. You're going to have to be a viewer. I can't I can't share it with you. I'll sign. All right. All right. I'll, I'll take it. Uh, but yeah, there you go. I guess I, that's all I got. Back to DZ. Uh, I'm going to go try to find that meme coin. Ooh, you got. better message, message <laughs> Tony. All right. Thank you. Always a great time. All right. Could we get a TA on Pooh? Uh, we, we could keep an eye out on that one. We just did a little on Pepe. So I don't want to go too hard on the meme TA. Uh, plus, we're going to be talking about some meme coins uh, later. Yeah. All right. That was such an odd, weird super chat. All right. Uh, let's see. What do we got? Let's get into the headlines. When do we say the meme coins? Oh, God. CT Minute? Yeah. yeah. All right. CT Minute. Guys. Or look, we could do Crypto Rivalry. It's the next section. Let's do Crypto Rivalry. Let's do okay. Crypto Rivalry. All right. I'm going to rush Frank. Or I mean, uh, Kelly. Kelly's he's going to get mad. People are going to type in. You're interrupting Kelly. It's for the meme coins, guys. It's for the culture. Uh, <laughs> the culture. Wow. All right. There's a lot of uh, a there's a lot of this particular animal weird. in the chat. So weird. So weird. weird. All right. Meme coin trading volume surges a two year high. Signals a caution for the Bitcoin bulls. Uh, saw a two point three million dollars in meme coin trading volume last week. Six fold rise from the previous week. Uh, it's the highest since May of twenty one. That's nuts, folks. Yeah, that's nuts. Uh, so the May of 21, that's uh, right around Doge. I think she was kind of super early then. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, now we're getting back into bull market territory when we're talking about volume. Historically, speculative mania and non-serious cryptocurrencies, which is 99% of them, has presaged major market tops or bearish reversals in Bitcoin, the leading cryptocurrency by market value. Uh, the DXY saw a brief bounce of 101.75 on Friday following the release of surprisingly strong U.S. job data, but then has fallen down below 101.2. So meme coins taking all of the, the oxygen out of the room right now. It's true. It's uh, true. Bitcoin's mining king is in the chat. Okay, okay. Whoa. The mining king? I didn't know he was here. I mean, that's he's he's got to be a CCP big deal. CCP representative that oversees F2 pool? <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't know. I think that used to be the case. I don't know if it's the case now. <laughs> Do you think that used to be the case? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. The truth said absolutely with no hesitation. That makes me feel a little bit better about yeah. my uh, harebrained theory here. <laughs> All right. Bitcoin network overwhelmed by these cars what? by 390,000 unconfirmed transactions and surging fees. Just under two weeks, the number of unconfirmed transactions has skyrocketed from 134 to 390,000. There's a 343% increase in fees. Uh, it's a major, major traffic jam happening right now. So, guys, we're almost at 400,000 transactions waiting in limbo, uh, just kind of waiting for confirmation there. Uh, let's see. We've already passed 4 million ordinal inscriptions. We're almost at 4.2. <laughs> nice. To clear the current backlog, a whopping... 179 blocks would need to be mined given the average block time of 10 minutes that would be 1.24 days to mine the required number of blocks so we're uh we got a, a day and a quarter backlog right now uh so that's why we're seeing that the fee usage or the fees skyrocket 350 percent the clog pull has been a hot topic on social media with users having a range of opinions on the matter while some are excited Others have labeled the rise of non-financial transactions as a DDoS attack or an attack. This guy, guys, is not under attack. The anemic block size increases simply weren't sufficient to meet demand. Mm. And Lightning didn't see mass adoption. Quit whining. Either accept that a huge mempool and huge fees will be the norm or properly increase your block size. Oh, my God. Uh, let's see. The largest <laughs> crypto exchange, uh, yeah, Binance did temporarily halt Bitcoin withdrawals, uh, attributed this decision to a congestion issue that the network is currently grappling with. Currently working on a fix until the network is stabilized and will reopen withdrawals as soon as possible. Rest assured, funds are Safu, uh, he wrote Sunday morning. Roughly an hour and a half later, they resume Bitcoin withdrawals. There's also a gigantic uh, Bitcoin withdrawal from Binance, but some people are speculating it was internal wallet. Uh, some people are, you know, I don't know. What, what, what's your thoughts? Have you seen that? I did see it. I didn't see any details like actually verifying which wallet it was. So it's still up in the air. Ooh. Hit merch. Hey. Hit merch.com. 
We get also, that? we have this nifty little mug around the blockchain. I like that one. It looks good. Uh, why does he have two liquids? <laughs> and why does one of them make him do this? <laughs> Vodka, man. All right. Unbelievable. Uh, let's see. What else do we got? What else do we got? Uh, all right. Binance. All right. Here's now we're going to talk about yeah. it right here. Binance. All right. So they're saying they shifted it. Shifted. It wasn't a small amount of Bitcoin. It wasn't like what I have in my wallet. No, we're talking about $4.4 billion worth. $4.4 billion in Bitcoin uh, was moved as they paused withdrawals. What the heck is going on? Uh, so they, this is a hoarding, uh, according to CryptoQuant's head of research. All right, if there's someone who probably knows this stuff, I would assume, one, CryptoQuant knows this stuff. Nansa knows this stuff. There's a handful of really good companies that, hey, Glass Nodes, I would put those three, like, really, really high. Mm -hmm. This is their head of research. Yeah. You think uh, BJ's nerdy? What do you think this guy is? Total yeah. DNG, but like in a good way. Dork nerd geek. Uh, yeah. I would, I would let this guy. Uh, I would, I would love to pick this guy's ear for just hours and hours. Julio <laughs> Moreno. So uh, he's CryptoQuant's head of research, and he said they. This according to him. This was just an internal transaction. Uh, they moved two tranches, a hundred and seventeen thousand Bitcoin, and then forty thousand Bitcoin. In reality, these are Bitcoin sent to newly created uh, addresses that belong to Binance. All right. Uh, that's probably a good thing, right? Because yeah. you spin out a wallet at an exchange and there's going to be X number of people who know the keys to that. Mm -hmm. so some sort of multi-sig. And then just fast forward five years, does that number shrink or grow? Well, Here maybe people perish and so it shrinks. Maybe it grows. Yeah, I'd say it grows more often than not. Just yeah. with more people getting involved, companies growing, you know, uh, more points of failure and more points of failure. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm comfortable moving that around. So it looks like it was just between hot and cold wallets due yeah. to the uh, address adjustments there. So nothing to fear there. Uh, a lot of people are tweeting about the $4.4 .4 billion. Um, but Binance keeps shaking off uh, all, all issues. I've seen them pause things multiple times and then mm -hmm. they always resume it. And uh, oftentimes they'll resume something in 30 minutes. But, you know, hey, 7 p.m., we paused it for 30 minutes, and then it's the next day at 2 p.m., and people are like, yeah, man, did you hear that they paused withdrawals? I know. I and, know. you know, they, they create yeah. this uh, whirlwind, this tornado, this typhoon of FUD. And then 10K Bitcoin calls start taking over again for half and hour. And meanwhile, there's some big whale who opened a short and is just doing this. Yeah. Just standing there. Reckon. All right. Uh, let's see. What do we got? I, I just, I'm having fun reading some chat here. At least uh, reference altcoin daily about skim trading, please. I didn't. Did we mention skim trading? No. 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 I don't even know what skim trading is. No. Skim trading is uh, where you like skimming the Maybe, water. Is it and you're like trading bot? with a laptop open. So you're like on skis. <laughs> like arbitrage. I mean, it might be the MevBot. It's talk. your Apple Watch. You know, it's yeah. connected to your phone that's on the boat. So you're like, you're sitting here like you got a leverage trade of Pepe going <laughs> while you're, uh, you know, like holding on. Tap it with your nose. Please I think don't that's do skin that. trading. <laughs> Doesn't sound so. Uh, it sounds like some altcoin daily would do. Yeah, that's true. That's uh, true. Shout out to ah, I forget their movie name. I'm gonna have to. I want to watch their movie. They have a Lifetime movie mm. where they play. You know, starts out like a regular Lifetime movie, and then it turns into a horror movie where one of the twin brothers comes and he wants everything the brother has. Oh my gosh! Including his woman. Oh no! Yeah, yeah. So uh, I really, really want to watch that movie. Just... All right, uh, Yellen. We're talking about altcoin dailies. Uh, they're actors. Folks, they, they they have like uh you know movies in the pipeline and stuff. They, they got it going on, man. They got it going on. I it's not it. just whale tank. I love what, it. what the heck's the show called? Uh, whale sharks. Crypto whale shark or something like that. Yeah, crypto it's... whales. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's gonna be huge. It's gonna be huge. All right. Uh, yelling. I'm yelling now about things that aren't crypto. So let's mm. talk about politics, crypto, finances here. Yellen warning of an economic chaos unless Congress raises the debt ceiling. I am so tired of these stupid debt ceiling <laughs> uh, Mexican standoffs here. Said failure to raise the debt ceiling will cause a steep economic downturn in the U.S. And she reiterated her warning that the Treasury Department may run out of measures to pay its debt obligations in June. She's called for decisive action and quickly uh, in a letter to McCarthy, uh, Yellen said new data on tax receipts forced the department to move up its estimate of when the Treasury Department will be unable to continue to satisfy all its debts, uh, potentially as early as the 1st of June. Uh, this is a little bit earlier than Wall Street economists were expecting. But for uh, the senator out of Oklahoma, the meeting about the debt ceiling should have happened much sooner. He said the issue raised the week after the election in November and that Biden's refusal to negotiate has been stunning. Mm. Uh, speaking of uh, Biden, did you hear his potential adversary, Robert F. Kennedy's interview on All In? 
I did not hear the all in podcast, but I got a pretty good idea of what Rob Kennedy, uh, you know, was probably bringing up. You know, the one thing that he, Robert Kennedy lost me on was just verifying that we're in this climate catastrophe and that we have to. He is a Democrat. You know, well. He's, it, he's. Does that mean that he's you navigating have, lanes yeah. in which he could probably still get elected by their electorate? Uh, he lost, he lost me there, you know, because I'm not ready to. Well, I think that. he's signaling with a lot of these issues, for instance, education and yeah. opening up uh, school choice, you know, nuclear. He's mm -hmm. not being uh, as final about it yeah. as a lot of people. And so I'm, I'm trying to be cautiously optimistic. <sighs> he's just he's going to get steamrolled. He can't talk over. He's not going to win. If there ever is another Democratic debate held in this country, I don't think that he'll be able to win. They, they might not even do Democrat debates this time. Yeah, I probably so, won't. But yeah. I, I like the guy. I yeah, he's won't. got a heart of gold. Don't I like anybody who's like, yeah, CIA killed my uncle. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm like, it's pretty crazy. It's it was pretty ballsy hardcore. for him to say that. <laughs> pretty hardcore. Pretty hardcore. Yeah. So uh, you gain a lot of um, credibility mm -hmm. when uh, when you have that message. And it would be nice to see him go down the nuclear option. Then I, I could change my tune if okay. I could hear that. Okay. So, yeah. okay. He does talk about his uh, hesitancy with certain things, and he explains it very rationally, All too. Right. All right. All uh, right. Let's, uh, hey, guys, we're almost at the meme coins. Okay. We are almost there. Don't you worry. Crypto rivalry, it's happening soon. You're not going to want to miss it, all right? Mm -hmm. Very, very early. One, I just put a 1000 bucks in right before the stream. I'm going to share it with you guys. All right, U.S. banking turmoil. Now bigger than the 08 financial crisis, but the real storm hasn't hit yet. This is according to Peter St. Onge. Uh, said the current bank crisis is already larger than the turmoil we witnessed 15 years ago, and it is far from over, and we should brace for more collapses, even though the Fed is saying otherwise. He's basically saying they are liars. Uh, what's scary here is that going by 08, the early collapses are only the beginning, the screaming prelude to an extinction-level culling of banks crawling off to die. Right. Sounds like it was written by Nick DiMondi there. Interest rates typically take 12 to 18 months to really hit the economy, and we're barely six months in. So lining up against the 08 crisis implies the real storm is is not even hitting for another year. These are the first breezes of a coming hurricane, much like that first fart after ice cream. Yeah. Guys, worse things are coming. A tsunami, a wet tsunami is coming. Oh, is going to just tear everything up, okay? <laughs> anyway, we're seeing brown water floodgates, guys. It's going to be scary. Oh. That's his That's his assessment. Uh, I don't know if I'm going that hard because <sighs> we are printing much more money than we did last time, which I think will be a bigger headache in the future, Yeah, but make the pain relatively short term. It's it's a conversation I get caught up with all the time in the prepper community. There's a lot of people that think their dogs are going to get eaten by zombies next week because all these things. It's you know if you're looking at macroeconomics and things changing in front of you, things will tend to move a lot slower than you think they will. Um, you know if you're actually paying attention to the right stuff, shouldn't be so hyperbolic and worry about you know the world ending tomorrow. Just it might change. In I see people. Uh, he bought an hour ago. Uh, one. I can't sell for days working here. So yeah. you I actually might have the uh, chance to dump on me. Yeah, very um, much an advantage. So anything that I say publicly, <laughs> like we have we have policies here and I have to yeah. hold it for 72 hours. So that's right. Don't dump on me. <laughs> like you, you could be the one that dumps on me. And I actually looked at the price chart before I went in. I think I actually am down. Um, but, you know, that's... Uh, I, I bought a local top. Don't get I you. I bought a local top. It's, it's, guys, it's like 16 hours old. So yeah. you... Well, hey... Stick around, stick around, stick around. Okay, it's coming soon. All right, U.S. to ban short selling, according to J.P. Morgan. Fun. That will never happen. Uh, they say they might temporarily be banned. Uh, they written to the SEC about their concerns. They made over a billion from betting against the struggling bank. So it looks like they just want to short, uh, stop the shorting on these uh, banks that are collapsing. Yeah. They have argued that short sellers are scaring people to think the crisis would ensnare even more banks. Analysts noted that the argument might temporarily force regulators to halt short selling activities. Meanwhile, they highlight this concern in its note. According to the banking giant, has never seen a situation where a perfectly healthy bank ends up in the hands of the FDIC within a very short period. Mm -hmm. Looks like they did happen. There are solvent banks that apparently were uh, just kind of co-opted. While three major uh, regional banks holding $532 billion in deposits have already failed, short sellers appear to be swimming in profits. The state of firm reported that sales had made $1.2 billion betting against these struggling stocks. I'm almost, I almost feel like they're trying to create FOMO for shorting. Like, guys, <laughs> yeah. they're going to ban shorting pretty soon. Right, right. And then they turn around and they close all their short positions. Oh, like, you better man. open that short. Click, 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 click. <laughs> yeah, yeah, open it. They're banning it soon. 
All of a sudden, yeah, Jim, yeah, yeah, better open another one. Jim Cramer's on CNBC saying to short him, you know, it's over with. He's, I mean, do, do I, am I hanging out with you too much? Does that make me a tinfoil hat where, I guess. where that's my first assumption? I, you know, tin, do I really wear a tinfoil hat? I think I'm just more of a coincidence analyst rather than a conspiracy theorist at this point. So, uh, In a in a free market, shorting keeps uh, people honest. Absolutely. And so Absolutely. I'm, I'm for shorting, you know, and uh, I think we saw a lot of it with the short squeeze of AMC and uh, mm -hmm. GameStop back in the day. You know, people saw the banks and the power of the, the multitudes of the commoners. We we're able to take down the the big players there until they changed the rules. Yep. Uh, with uh, Robin Hood's clearinghouse, what what is the Citadel, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where Citadel <laughs> basically ripped us all off. Yeah. Uh, and that is not free market. That is uh, the government stepping in, and uh, that's where we start heading towards oligarchy, mm -hmm. uh, where you have favored rich people or just kind of given different rules. They were given different rules, and so I feel. Smells like they're trying to make different rules here. I'm sure someone in the up and up and someone connected is going to win from this. And I hate that. I, mm. I hate that. I, I really feel like they're just trying to get you to jump in as, as the party's ending. Yep. All right. Uh, U.S. government may freeze American bank withdrawals as currency panic and capital flight mounts. This is uh, according to Hugh Hendry. Uh, this is with Bloomberg Markets. It says mass panic and capital flight away from the U.S. banking sector is entirely justified. Uh, there is capital flight, deposit flight from the banking sector seeking yield. I fear that, and I don't say this lightly, but in 1934, the Fed Reserve Act confiscated gold from U.S. citizens. Mm -hmm. We're at the point where the Fed and tr uh, Treasury officials, I'm sure, are having to consider a gate, a lock on U.S. bank deposits. So mm -hmm. saying, hey, maybe something similar is going to happen here. I don't. I wasn't alive in 1934, but I can't imagine that was easy. I can't imagine how difficult it would be to try to steal Bitcoin from people, yeah. uh, steal precious metals well, from people today. In 1934, the government strongly asked people to hand over their gold. So it wasn't, you know, they didn't get strip searched and they didn't get their houses searched for the gold, but they were strongly suggested by armed personnel to hand it over. A lot of people didn't. A lot of people grabbed their own stuff and said, nope, come and take it. And they weren't able to take that. So, you know. Just a little bit of historical lesson in the power of uh, people when it comes to actually in, uh, enforcing uh, tyranny. So, uh, mm -hmm. speaking of tyranny, lowly man, can anyone see my poster? No. Yes. 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 We try not to be tyrannical. Hello. Uh, so, all right. Yeah, he's Johnny boy already. <laughs> no. Oh, he answered no. Uh, okay. All right. All right. All right. Johnny. Johnny's a funny one, huh? Yeah. Uh, they never confiscated gold. They asked for it. Oh, okay. Well, that With changes guns everything. in their hands. So, you know, yeah. you take your choice. Yeah, just like them. they asked Elian Gonzalez to lead uh, his bedroom closet. That was a strong suggestion. That was a strong suggestion. Yes, it was. Okay. Uh, that was an old, old reference right there. Elian Gonzalez. Uh, the <laughs> boomers know. The boomers know. Uh, Zoomers say, huh? <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, you can, all right. Active Ethereum deposits hit 1.5 year high as traders convert Pepe profit. So it's looking like uh, the tail end of 21. Yeah. All time high for uh, Bitcoin there. Uh, the number of active uh, deposits surged to over 20,000 for the first time in 18 months. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, November, December of 21. Currently, they began to climb from the beginning of May, coinciding with the opening of a meme coin season mm -hmm. and given the volatile hype cycle that tends to define the economics of tokens like pepe training them in for more established assets like eth probably a smart move yeah. definitely is at the top uh since it's launched in april more than four hundred and ten thousand pepe transactions have been completed on uniswap and as one twitter users calculated they burned a total of around 5300 eth and gas as one gas feed tracker shows, they've trended upward since the end of April. Uh, they even topped 240 Gwei on Friday, the highest level since May of this year. I might have to change my DCA on Friday strategy. I might have to just do it on Mondays. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, it, is, it is rough out there. It, it is, is. The last few Fridays have been kind of bad for DCA. And I'm a seasonal DCA-er, so I haven't really felt like buying too much. Um, you know, but... You know, that's just me. You know, I just try to combine TA with DCA strategy, but you know, I'm I'm just basically back up the truck when the time's right. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that. All right, a little CT minute. Ooh, um, well, hold on. Which we got is a, yeah. brought to you by Stake.us, and uh, I played over the weekend. You did had a pretty good time. We were down and then hit a big winner. A I'm big about winner. To sign up. I said we should walk away, and then we like gave him another sixty bucks. Yeah, should have yeah. walked away. Always listen to your gut. Always listen to your gut. <laughs> I almost wanted to go to the blackjack tables to try to win it all back on a thirty dollar, uh, you know, hand. You always do half on blackjack because they might have you double. 
Ooh. when you aren't ready to double, that's when they deal you the 11. And so I always got to cut it in half. But mm. hey, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and roll that. Brought to you by Steak. Oh, yeah. All righty, all righty. Uh, you know, Drew's like, you know what? I already gamble with uh, levers trading, you yeah. know? I was saying, well, this one at least has, like, you know, dopamine-producing sound effects and stuff. It's true. It's all right, nice let's addition. get into the CT minute. First, we're going to start with Drew. Um, Biden visits the basement. Guys, if you guys don't watch the basement, it is the funniest content that we're making out of here. Uh, so, hey, that was a really, really good episode. That image is cursed. Tubby Just... honorary. Uh, always have the, the nice doses of internet. Mm. Oh, he really thought he was going to make that one more time here. Hey, yeah, I can pole vault across this. I got it, fam. It's interesting. Watch scene. out. Say less in the jacket. Come on, brother. What are you doing here? Uh, JPEG junkies, we rocketed to the top six of uh, C and or JPEG dot store. Nice. The Dow has just been going nuts. Uh, our Japanese community members been going nuts. Uh, and so if you want to, hey, you could you have some junkies and you like to dictate the direction. Hey, check it out. Uh, get into the Dow. Your vote counts. All right, here we have just a little bit of semblance of sanity when it comes to ai mm. here's a little something created for a huge global of creative people uh generative ai is vampirical feasting on past generations of artwork even as it sucks the lifeblood from living artists i think this is just a good way of looking at this remember before ai when every artist was influenced by no one and generated all their art straight from their soul in an act of divine revelation uh this is a Nas song no idea is original yeah, I do think we're getting into hairy territory where you have Tupac rapping about a meme coin, you know, uh, Drake, you know, like the 20th Drake song just dropped and they're all fire. Um, yeah, you're looking at people's art and you're like, make me a people style art. But uh, everything is a tool. I think this has just been like the by far the sharpest knife. We went from like a dull knife all the way to a lightsaber. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's still tool, just like editing tools, just like brush. uh brush art tools uh just like just like a pc is a tool with digital art mm -hmm. um and just like a, a colored pencil is a tool now granted yeah we're jumping from dull butter knife to lightsaber it is a heck of a tool but it's still a tool and i think it's a good way of uh it's a good mental model to look at it that way not a defeatist model yeah where we have lost that that mindset drives me nuts you know when people they're looking at all this bad stuff going on they focus on the bad stuff and they get that kind of as you said def, that's the first time i've heard someone else say it the defeatist mindset it's a very toxic place to be and nothing good comes out of that so always look at the good side of stuff all right and uh and then we just have this tweet right here uh sec structural problem uh there's my dangling boogers on my filter mm -hmm. um you guys want to check that out you just see my tweets here but uh revealing the last two meme coins i bought on a live stream this morning coming soon folks coming mm -hmm. soon what else do we got okay uh that's the two tweets talking about it uh i guess bitlab and then we get into the memes yeah let's do it we got kelly in the wings let's get him primed up and ready to go here it's looking like he's uh he's in the laboratory getting things getting things cooking the laboratory oh oh <laughs> bitlab oh like dexter's not like the yeah. commode yeah what's going on man how you do it, man? I am excited. As you all know, all at the Hit Network and everybody that's been waiting for all these BitLab updates, it's finally here. We are rolling over tonight with all the new stuff, man. I'm so excited. Nice, nice. All right. Looking forward to that. So it's, what can we expect? New content? Uh, you know, new look? Uh, new UI? Is it, you know, have, have you been cloned? I've been cloned, uh, but no, not at all. And to your point uh, that you're just bringing up with the AI and art, same thing with uh, learning these markets and understanding Bitcoin and blockchain. Bitcoin and blockchain is the future. The question is, are you prepared? We could all learn more. We could all sharpen our sword more. And what we've, what we've done with BitLab Academy is completely rebuild it from the ground up. It's going to be a brand new website, over 100 new lessons just to start. That's not, that's not the end point. That's the starting point. 
We have so much uh, involved with this. Frankie Candles taught a, a f- uh, quite a few qu- uh, lessons in there. Got AJ writes crypto in some of the lessons as well. I, I teach quite a few of the lessons. We're going to have guest experts in there. Uh, we've got, you know, of course, some updates to the, the BitLab trading stack and trading suite as well. I'll show you a little bit about that here in a second. But with the new website, the new courses, it's all video broken down into structured uh, course plans that also has basically direct focus uh, topics. So you're not, you don't have to sit down if you're trying to learn about a couple of indicators like RSI or Bollinger Bands, or you're trying to learn some trading fundamentals or on-chain data analysis, all of which are courses within the new BitLab Academy. They're broken down into five to 12 minute videos based on the topic until we get into the trading strategy section, which those tend to be a little bit longer because we're tying all that stuff together. But the courses all have quizzes after each after each lesson. There's basically sort of practice uh, practice quizzes to make sure you pulled away the or you took away some of the most important concepts that we wanted to convey in those sections. And then at the end of the section, there's uh, you know basically a, a final or a test to, that ties in all the knowledge, just so you can check your progress. And of course, we've got the premium Discord that's part of BitLab Academy as well. That has a lot of basically BitLab alumni as well as a lot of the staff members here at Hit Network and BitBoy Crypto and BitLab Academy, as well as some of our other friends uh, and guest experts that are active in there. So uh, we've got so much going on in there. But if it's okay with you, I'd love to show one of the updates for the uh, for the relative extrema that's already live and also a new indicator uh, that that it's going to be coming out here in a second. Yeah, an unforgettable name. Kelly's worked so hard on BitLab. Going to be fire. Uh, financially independent, retire early. Uh, mm. And this might get you there. Yeah, let, let's see this new indicator. Yeah, I mean, and shout out to Unforgettable Name. He's always in our community over at the BitLab Daily Stream, which for pe- those that don't know, we've got this YouTube page, uh, YouTube channel that we started about two months ago, three months ago. And we're already pushing around 7,000. So come give us a follow. We're live every day before BitBo Crypto, 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. That's youtube.com forward slash at BitLab Academy. Now, in terms of the indicators, so the relative extrema, those of you, you've seen it here on stream that we've, when we're doing TA, and those of you that already have it, I just wanted to point out something. We've made some really big changes on a relative extrema that, I mean, I think are absolutely phenomenal. First stop, first step is here. We can see we basically changed the colors on the on the actual relative extrema, which is this one here. For all of the bars that are to the downside are green, which essentially it's still showing the same thing, but visually it's immediately recognizable that these bars to the downside are essentially bullish pressure. So when you have price action moving to the downside, as you can see right here, you see these relative extrema bars are sticking outside of the cloud, meaning this, this is an aggregate healthy momentum cloud of showing the healthy buy and sell pressures that are either in agreement or not agreement with the price action. In this case, we see these bars are way outside of the cloud. And if we look right here, Price is moving down, but then we see it reversed. Now, the, the the kicker here that I really love is that we tied the relative extrema into the price action on the chart. So you can see these green candles. The reason they're green is because it's showing that this is unhealthy bearish movement and a bullish setup is likely uh, is likely underway. A bullish setup, whether it means that this uh, this the, the bearish pressure, the bearish uh, price action uh, is likely to either consolidate or reverse back to the upside. Similarly, with the red candles coming to the upside, we can see this is tied to the price action when we get the red bars on top. Now, the the best way to utilize the BitLab trading stack is to use this in conjunction with, of course, your traditional TA and then the rest of the, the BitLab trading stack. So we can see here we got market intelligence. We see price action pushing up. We're wondering, is this going to explode? Is this going to continue to the upside? Well, we, we know that there's likely a trend, uh, either pause or reversal coming because these, these candles are red. Why are they red? Relative extrema is showing this is an unhealthy movement. So what I would suggest looking for here is when do we get our other signals? When do we see it coming into a known price action resistance level or bearish divergences that are printed here from the, the BitLab market intelligence? Now, if we turn on the, these price levels, we can see this price action coming up and we're in this we're in this sort of a fault, this rising wedge, which is a bearish structure or coming into this sort of uh, resistance level here, similar right here, came into this level, rejected, came into this level, uh, this, this resistance right here, bearish divergence, uh, rejected. Similarly, if we tie this with the significant movement uh, showing overvalued, we can tie all these things together and whether or not anybody out there uses a BitLab trading stack or just traditional MACD, RSI, stochastics, or market uh, cipher, whatever whatever indicators you're u- using, 
I really want to emphasize the importance of finding confluence of not only the signals that you're seeing, but finding that in confluence with what's happening with price action and on known price levels, on known levels of support or resistance. And now the kicker I'm gonna share here is we have a new indicator that's gonna be coming out. It's not out yet, but I'm just showing you a little preview here. It's called the Mesopic Vision. And essentially it's, it's similar to the VPVR, but we have uh, three different settings on it. This Submersus, which is basically like a traditional VPVR that it will give you the volume profile of the entire, uh, the entire chart that you're looking at. And you can see these uh, basically heat maps of when you're basically your points of control or your high vol very high volume nodes. We have the point of control sticking out of this, but the really interesting thing about this, I think, and Nick did a great job on this, is you can see these, these, uh, these blocks here. These are basically high interest uh, based volume liquidity blocks of where there was some anomaly going on in price action here. And if we actually, if we zoom out on this, let's go on the daily, you can see this more clearly. Uh, we can see, boom. Okay, so you can see right here, this order block, or this order block right here, this price action came out and went, once this came back down, it did find a little bit of support on this order block. On this level right here, this was showing that uh, basically there's an anomaly here and price action is likely going to revisit this. And once we came back up to this level, it's not only the, the previous top, but it's actually a high interest in where liquidity is or isn't at, at that sort of zone. So there's a couple of different things we can do with this and it's, it's really great, but that's enough about the indicators. I do wanna just shout out the new BitLab Academy, which is this page right here. The, the BitLabAcademy.com is going to be turned off late night tonight because we're going to be rolling over all the, basically the entire website to the new server. So that you're going to see uh, a nice graphic there that explains what's going on, but it's not going to be on for the next, uh, tonight, later on tonight, after, after probably 9 or 9, or 9 p.m. or so. Um, but I do want to shout out anybody that does sign up before that update goes live. Uh, we do have uh, a, a basically special discount, but I just wanted to just show you here. We've got all this stuff going on here. We got TJ showing his pretty face down here at the bottom, but we've got all these new courses that are involved in uh, BitLab Academy. We've got a beginner's area that people can sign up for for free, so you can learn the basics for free. When you want to go deeper, you can go through all of these different courses, and there's going to be more and more and more stuff coming. Well, stop so, showing them. Stop showing them. It will be all different hey. tomorrow. It will be all different tomorrow. So, guys, uh, <laughs> no, get no. in now. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Hey, all right. Look well, at this I, all the stuff that's going to change. Um, yeah, so get in. Get in. Uh, I, I love it. I'm looking forward to the new revamped. Uh, and well, I see the people in the chat. I, I could tell these people are making money off of it because mm -hmm. they definitely like oh, all these. I just want to shout out. I just want to shout out for everybody that's watching right now. You have the benefit you can sign up today before we roll out for an extra 30% off. Just put in this code, give me 30 off. Or if you're just getting the indicators, stack 30. Uh, this is uh, only gonna be a 24 hour deal. So Ooh, just wanna, and the reason the, the reason why I'm pushing that is the prices for BitLab Academy are going up once we're live. And anybody that signs up before that happens gets to keep the current, uh, the current member pricing lock it for in. the life of their account. So with that, awesome. lock it in. Love you all. I can't, I can't wait to share this with you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, I like that second indicator. Thank you, Kelly. Always a great time. Uh, I like that second indicator. It looked like it had trigger waves. It yeah. reminded me of a uh, Marcus Cypher B. I was looking at like a lot of trigger waves playing off on that. I might have to check that one out. It helps. There's a lot of information he's consolidated on there, and it helps to kind of organize it all and keep it color coded. So it's just looking like it's really coming together for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's a. Uh, I, I tell you the trading I've been doing, just yellowing. Yellowing into meme coins. And let's get into it, guys. That's right. It is meme coin time. Dun, dun. We're going to have a cheap one that you can get in. Uh, maybe the pump's done. I'll, I'll give you the speculative one that's on Cardano. I'm going to give you two Cardano ones. And then we got an ETH one that is 15 hours old. Something like, is, was it 1230? So, yeah, it was like 15 hours old. Maybe mm. 16, 17. I don't know. Uh, last night. It came out last night. Very, very uh, fresh. And one of those coins I haven't even bought. I tried to buy before the show. I don't know if I didn't have my slippage up. That's the Cardano one. So, this one you can front run me on, okay? Mm. I'm literally going to go out and try to buy it again right after this. I have an order queued, but it was queued for like 30 minutes, and I think I think the price escalated. Yeah. Cardano things, and yeah. uh, I think I'm going to have to cancel that order, up the slippage, do a limit order, pay a lot. Uh, so you have one you can front run me on, uh, one I bought an hour ago, full disclosure. I bought an hour ago, folks. I bought an hour ago, maybe close to an hour and a half. Yeah. All right, you ready? You ready, ready to talk to about it. these I'm, coins? I'm First one on Cardano. The pumps may be in, but I, I think this is still very low market cap. It's, I'm having a lot of fun with it. 
trading fees are like one or two ADA, three ADA. Guys, you're looking at trading fees of like 50 cents to a dollar, not 50 to a hundred dollars, 50 cent trading fees. Talking about snack, snack coin. Uh, Here, uh, here's just a little tweet by Jimbo snake trending on CMC uh, MFers. And here, if you just type in snake, I don't know goofy crisp. Uh, He is a chilled Kong community member. I think we've messaged, you know, going back probably close to two years at this point, uh, way when I first started getting into Cardano in a, or I guess more closer to a year, year and a half. Uh, this is, I think he was part of the team is snake coin ADA. You can get it on men swap. Uh, we have a buyer's guys, guys, we told you about this one, yep. uh, days ago. Uh, yep. so looks like taco told you guys about this four days ago. Um, if you got in with taco, you're up. I th- I don't know. You're up 500% you're, probably. Yeah. You're you're way yeah. up. You're way up if you jumped had, in with Taco. I talked to well. Taco. So he's Taco. doing real well. <laughs> yeah, no. He sold. I know. <laughs> he sold too early. I think he made it 2x and he sold. Yeah. He said he's probably going to maybe buy some more. I said, "Man, I'm going to bring it up again. I'm going to show your videos like, man, I might jump in, put he's in doing a work over there, man. He's really putting out some good content." Yeah, yeah. So uh we actually told you how to buy it on NFT Alpha 4 days ago. Um, you know, so uh Snake, it's it's doing good. It's it's just a fun little meme coin. Uh you could ch- check out just S N E K Snake Coin ADA, uh the contract address. I think it's a little bit of a a local uh top right now so just be careful just look all this is money you might lose yep. now here's the speculative one on cardano i wasn't able to buy dgaf type it in a min swap i haven't even bought it yet you can front run me i'm, I'm gonna put in two three hundred ADA. nothing crazy okay. guys it's like 80 bucks 100 bucks i'm i'm not sitting here trying to put you know percentages of my portfolio in this i'm not trying to spend all my cardano on this i'm putting some snake profits I sold that too early. Um, mm. uh, you know, I'm going to put that into this and something speculative. So DJAF front run me. I don't care. I don't, I don't give a F. Uh, so that's your, that's your chance to front run DZ. Here's the one I bought an hour ago. A little more excited about this one. If I'm going to oh. be honest, uh, because I think it's just, uh, I hate, I hate it when the, the freaking thing highlights on this. Is that Bambi drinking liquor? Yeah, I think we'll even look at the uh, the website here. Uh, Bam uh, Mason was tweeting about this. Uh, Bam, not Bam Margera, uh, but shout out the first 431 holders. Uh, this was 15 hours ago, so it looks like he got in pretty early. Mm. Uh, Decrypto is talking about this. This one, I look 140,000 views on this one. Um, so uh, check out Bam, and it is Bambi.cash. Uh, here's the thing. They, I guess the IP is, it ran out. It's over a hundred years, 112 years, 78 years. I, I don't know. There's some sort of years where then you could use intellectual property. Yeah. So this is a uh, Bambi with, uh, with attitude, I guess. Yeah. Um, and so it, it tells you, could just buy it here. Bambi.cash. Things this isn't changed. sponsored. This is just, <laughs> you guys, Ben's going hard on the meme coins. Yeah. You guys are loving the meme coins. I'm starting to go a little hard on the meme coins. Look, this isn't responsible. Okay, this isn't Bitcoin. This isn't Ethereum. This isn't Cardano. Okay, this this is a fun ride where you can lose everything. But this is like 16 hours old. Yeah, 17 hours old. I just put in a thousand an hour and a half ago. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. Bambi's changed ever since flu season. Something happened. Something's happened. Uh, Thumper looks a little hardcore. Yeah. You know, look, survival came out of co- look. What is Bambi's story? He saw his mom get shot. That's gonna probably lead you down a dark path, right? <sighs> uh, mentally emotionally spiritually yeah. you know so yeah. yeah you probably are gonna hang out with the bad kids around <laughs> the clock you know thumper i mean who knows what thumper had i mean with the name thumper you gotta be a little hardcore at some point in your life for sure uh but uh, i i I, <laughs> I kid you not i heard a uh tupac song about bambi this morning i don't know where taco found it I'll, i have to ask him uh yeah so if they tell you how to buy it look uh it's a fun one um if you can find that tupac song feel free it's pretty funny um it's it's actually like talking about like your mom getting murdered in the forest (laughs) like it's like and it's real tupac it's like that's uh surprisingly good and uh i think it's going to be listed on one or two exchanges centralized exchanges okay typically if that happens there's another run-up we saw it with pepe i'm not saying this is going to go up i'm saying i put in some money that i'm okay losing might lose it. Uh, 300,000. Start a new portfolio. How would you allocate? What expectations would you have for said portfolio during the bull run? Don't be like me and gamble with, you know, percentages. Um, yeah. I would play with one or 2K with memes, but I would be mostly Cardano, ETH, Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I would look at a uh, rest of, you know, I would stay, I would try to stay in top 50. Yeah. But 
Me personally, I'd be playing with three to five K. I'd yeah. be I'd be a D Gen with one or two ETH, uh, maybe three ETH for sure. For sure. If I was if I if it was me. All right. Um, so hey, uh, are you getting in? Did you get in? I got in on I got in on Bambi. Tim, um, Tim, are you getting in? Tim's thinking about it. Tim's thinking about it. He's he don't know. Well, Tim, I'm going to be having fun in the forest. The fun is coming back to crypto. It feels the animal spirits Guys, this might returned. be gone in a week. This yeah. might be gone tomorrow. Yeah. Um, who knows? I don't know. So uh, usually you can see the you can see the telltale signs. I wouldn't worry about Pepe losses right now. I think people are pulling Pepe profits. Uh, Macaulay Culkin plays Bambi in the new Disney redo. Oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's bullish. Uh, yeah. Um, Macaulay Culkin. Good guy, right? Did you like Home Alone? I loved Home Alone, man. It, that, that was a hard thing to watch Macaulay uh, kind of turn into what he did turn into. Has he turned his life around again? Like, I don't he... know. I don't know. He definitely liked to party. You could tell. Yeah. Um, but hey, you know. Things uh, got weird when Marilyn Manson started taking pictures with his arms wrapped around Macaulay Culkin. Was I thought it was weird, you know, Michael Jackson spent the night with him. But yeah, anyways, was, all right, was... Ripple. Let's talk a little Ripple here. Mm. Uh, wait, what do we have for this day in crypto? Well, we do. This is this day in crypto. This is a no little way. shout out to uh, kind of a big moment in Ripple history. 2017. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Over. I know. Ripple. This day in history, six years ago, Ripple overtakes Ethereum to become second largest crypto after a Japanese bank consortium formed. Um Rather unexpectedly, it took over Ethereum by 200 million in market cap to become the world's second largest crypto with a total market cap of 8.5 billion. Over a 24 hour period, it recorded a 71.6% increase while Ethereum fell 6.85%. So, mm. yeah, this is a early 2017. It's so cool to see their tug of war happen. Now we see where Ethereum is now. Um, but Ripple is capable of quite a bit of. Uh, of price action and, and market cap we've seen in the past i hold i've held xrp since 17 cents and i won't get rid of it till this lawsuit's done and probably at the top of the bull run hopefully around there uh he looks the same just has facial hair do, who me do i look like someone they say we look the same i don't know maybe i Not know really. i get the top g comments no, all the time yeah i got a mohawk so you know all much right. different d and g dork nerd geek <laughs> all right uh speaking of dork nerds and geeks we got these xrp no i'm kidding uh, all right let's talk about 200 million dollar legal fees oh. defending against sec to cost them 200 million this is according to brad garlinghouse the ceo of ripple uh 200 million spent not spending spent 200 million thus far that is an insane amount. Uh, in a message to SEC, Gary Gensler expressed regret about the U.S. falling behind significantly as they expand to the UAE. According to him, the tough thing about the situation is having a country that has put politics ahead of policy. Mm. When asked about the U.S. needing clear framework for crypto, he said the SEC must understand that the vast majority of people working in crypto and blockchain are good actors like Altcoin Daily who want to stay within the rules of the road but need them defined. We need a stop sign. We need speed limit signs. We need stoplights, okay? We're driving down the road, and then we blow past the intersection, and you pull us over, and we say, there was no stop sign. You should have known to stop. Well, there wasn't a stop sign. We told you to stop. No, you didn't. I asked. I actually asked, do I stop at that intersection? And you said, uh, results unclear. Please ask again <laughs> later. Like, it's a freaking eight ball. And then we roll past the intersection as safe as possible. I look left, right, and left. Yeah. And then you give us a ticket. Okay, that's the situation we're in right now with the SEC. They're being very intellectually dishonest. Uh, but I think the people are seeing it. I think the politicians mm -hmm. are seeing it. I think the political pundits and the financial pundits on television stations are seeing it, regardless of what side of the aisle they might align with. And the truth shall set everyone free. Truth is a disinfectant. I don't have a DZ quote. Mm. Tim, give me a letter of the alphabet. L. L. Let's do it on L's. All right. You could take L's in life. This is DZ uh, inspirational quote of the day. Mm. No L is an L if you choose it to be. Okay. You could take a loss and you could take that as a learning lesson or you could take it as a loss. I take every loss as a learning lesson because it is just an opportunity to become stronger, to learn, and to become better. How does Goku get from little peon to beating up Vegeta? 
He does it by getting his butt kicked. Yeah. And why? Because he took a bunch of L's. But did he take that as an L? Do you see him not doing push-ups after he gets beat up? No, you see him doing more push-ups after he gets beat up because it's motivation. And so L's can be the best motivation. You want the best motivation to, for a gym workout session? Get broken up with your girlfriend. Yeah. Lose your job. Get in a huge fight. Uh, have your dog poop on your couch. You're going to be at that gym going nuts, okay? And that is an L that you then turn into a W. And so I'm saying turn those L's into W's, but we can all do it. Sky's the limit. Hit that like button. And that's the first step. That's all I got. Easy out. Ooh.